this training will describe how to select and assign subject and genre form access points. Many of our researchers discover archival material through keyword searching, either in our finding aids database or through search engines like Google. Keyword searches are based on any terms included in a web document, from the headers, body, or metadata. While this increases the words available for search engines to index, it may reduce the precision of searching since the keywords found may not adequately reflect the subjects or other characteristics of the materials. Keyword searching is very literal and also cannot distinguish between words with multiple meanings. For example, doing a search on Google for Vikings will return a diverse list of resources reflecting the variety of uses of the term Vikings. While most sections of archival descriptions are primarily narrative, in order to improve the quality of search results, libraries and archives also include access points in their descriptive records to improve search results. Access points are terms taken from indices or controlled vocabularies, such as the Library of Congress subject headings or the Getty's Art and Architecture Thesaurus. The terms are placed in separate database fields from the other portions of the description so that they may be searched separately. By searching on access points, researchers are able to locate materials more quickly and with greater accuracy. The inclusion of access points will also improve keyword search results. While describing archives a content standard or DAX, List six categories of access points that can be used in archival descriptions. There are basically only four. Subjects, which can include people, places, things, or ideas. Documentary forms, what we typically call genres and forms, or genre forms. Occupations and functions. Our institutional requirements state that each of these types of access points should be used as needed at the collection, series, and subseries levels. It should be remembered that these values will inherit if not re-entered at the appropriate level. For example, if you assign a subject access point of Mormons at the collection level, it will also be assumed to be the subject of the series within the collection unless another term is entered. At the file or item level, the only access points required are for documentary forms. Again, it is important to remember inheritance, especially if the containing level has multiple documentary form access points. We will now review each of the four types of access points, along with some recommendations for selecting the correct terms. The first type of access point, subjects, is perhaps the most complex. A certain amount of analysis must be done in determining which and how many subjects to use to describe a body of materials. The main goal of subject analysis is to determine what the material is about or whether it has a subject focus. Subjects include concepts or ideas, people, companies, time periods, locations, or resources. These are the same things that you should have already recorded in your scope and content note, which can be used as a source for identifying subject access points. It is a good rule of thumb that any access points provided should be found in your scope and content note, or conversely, that if it was not worth mentioning there, it probably does not merit an access point. Once you have determined what the material is about, the second step is to translate that idea into a controlled vocabulary list, such as the Library of Congress subject headings. There are two main ways in which using controlled vocabularies improve the speed and precision of searching, through collocation of terms and the syndetic structure of the index. Collocation within a controlled vocabulary is accomplished through a series of references pointing users to a single term for each concept. For example, in the Library of Congress subject heading, the entry for this type of animal is dogs. Looking at the full entry, we see other terms for this type of animal. However, each of these terms refers back to the access point, which is dogs. By making all information on dogs available by searching that term, the precision of the search is greatly improved. 
The other helpful feature of controlled vocabularies is their syndetic structure, which provides a second series of references, this time between hierarchically arranged concepts. Again, looking at the Library of Congress subject headings entry for dogs, we find that the heading exists in a continuum of access points. In this hierarchy, the entry shows that dogs has two broader terms, domestic animals and the gray wolf. We also find that there are a number of narrower subjects about dogs which are included in the entry, including references to camping with dogs and boating with dogs. So, as you begin to look for access points, there are five main points to keep in mind. The first of these is the need to be objective when selecting terms. It is important that we represent the intention of the audience of the creator of the materials when recording a subject and not let our own values be represented. For example, if this dog were the subject of a subseries, the term used for the description could easily be Siberian Husky or dangerous dogs depending on the intention of the material's creator. This need for objectivity is particularly important for materials with controversial subjects or for concepts or practices whose meanings have shifted over time. As you are selecting terms, you should use the syndetic structure of the control vocabulary to help you to find the correct terms. While you may start your search at one term, you should review the references to determine whether that term fits, or if there is a broader or narrower term that might be more appropriate. At all levels of your description, it is important that the terms used be specific to that level. At the collection level, the access points should be specific to the collection, and at the subseries level, the access points should be specific to the subseries. For example, while at the collection level your subject may be dogs, at the subseries level the subject might be more specific, such as wire fox terriers. At any given level of description, it is also important that access points used should be adequately represented in the work. We follow the Library of Congress rule on access points, which requires that at least 20% of the content of the materials being described relate to the topic before a subject access point can be assigned. So, for example, if a collection level description includes material on Mormon pioneers, agriculture in Utah, Mormon missionaries, and Brigham Young, only those with at least 20% of the material should be used at that level. In this case, Brigham Young would not be included as an access point at the collection level. If at a lower level of description, such as a subseries, the Brigham Young materials constituted 20% of body of material, he should be entered as an access point at the subseries level. The final point to keep in mind is that subjects should be specific to a given level, but not overly so. As a rule, when you are dealing with a body of materials that deals with multiple aspects of a single topic, if there are three or less, you may enter each of these aspects or subtopics separately. If there are more than three, though, then you should round up to the next broader topic. So, for example, if you had a body of materials about dogs, which only included information on three breeds, then access points for each breed could be used. But if there were four, then you would need to use the access point for the broader concept of dogs. When rounding up, it is important to be sure that you use the appropriate broader term so that it doesn't include any other concepts. As we do our descriptive work, there are two types of subject access points that we need to be looking at and using. The first of these is the CCLA EAD browse terms. These are broad subject area terms which will be used for browsing in our Finding Aids database. At the top level of a descriptive record, you are required to enter at least one broad term and one narrower term. In addition to the browse terms, we also use a series of more specific subject access points. At the Lee Library, we use the Library of Congress subject headings for all topical entries and the Library of Congress name authority file for any personal or corporate body name entries. These headings can be accessed at the Library of Congress website, or you can use the large printed volumes. If you are unable to locate the correct term in the Library of Congress sites, please consult with the manuscripts cataloger. In addition to subject terms, there are other access points that should be recorded. The first of these are documentary form access points, or genre form terms. 
These index terms allow users to search for items by type rather than subject content and describe what an item is, not what it is about. For example, while the subject of this item might be Utah, its documentary form is books. Another type of access point is functional terms. These access points are meant to document the functions that generated a body of material. For example, a collection of business financial records might have function access points for accounting or auditing, depending on the purpose of their creation. Similar to functional terms are access points for occupations. These access points play the same role as functions for personal papers and document the individual occupational activities that generated a body of materials, whether that be the work of artists, teachers, or judges. While function and occupation access points may be used as needed, our institutional guidelines require that genre form terms be used at all levels of description. When selecting documentary form terms, you should use the library catalog. This can be done by running an alphabetical search for the appropriate genre form. If the term you enter is a non-preferred term, then follow the links until you find the correct access point. If you are unable to find the term needed in the library catalog, please consult with the manuscripts cataloger. As with subjects, it is important to remember that documentary form access points should be appropriate to the level being described and represent at least 20% of the material at that level. For other questions, please consult your curator.